Good evening, I'm Melissa Ridgen with a special July 1st edition of APTN National News, looking back at the discovery of unmarked graves of children at residential school sites, beginning into Kamloops to Shukwekma, where 215 were located by ground penetrating radar, kicking off the national conversation about indigenous children who were forced into these schools, many of whom never made it home. Here's seen a house in Kamloops last summer, warning this story may be difficult for some viewers. The Kamloops Indian Residential School was first established in 1890 and thousands of kids from across BC were sent here. For years, former students told horrific stories about this residential school. Stories of sexual and physical abuse from nuns, priests and workers. And even stories about how kids just completely disappeared. Now with the 215 kids that were discovered in a mass unmarked grave, the memorial outside the school is growing by the minute. Rose Miller is almost 80 years old now, and she's a former student here along with many of her other family members. Uh, my dad, Henry, my brother Bobby, my uncle John, my uncle Louis, my cousins and aunts, and, uh, and myself right here. It's been just about 73 years since Rose Miller first walked through those doors as a seven-year-old little girl from Canham Lake, B.C. in 1949. She says she, along with her two brothers, were forcibly removed from their home, and she says it was just the beginning of a total nightmare. It was awful because the food that they fed us for, uh, for breakfast was uh, lumpy, uncooked, mush with sour milk lots of times. The food truck used to come in at 5 in the morning. We could smell all that, that bread and we couldn't have bread half the time and we were so hungry. They'd give us boxes of apples from the apple orchard down here and a lot of times they're all rotten and we're so hungry we've got to scrape out the rotten part of the apple and eat it. At 8 years old, Rose says She'd had enough and ran away along the riverbank as far as she could. I stole some um, paper in an envelope so I could mail a letter to my dad to come and get us. And then we got caught. So they took all, all of us girls who used to play down here on the, on the, by the river here and they took everybody into the dorm and they made us strip down to our panties. There was three of us. Well, we called it bluebirds. That's all they gave us. So then they had a great big strap. It must have been about a quarter of an inch or a half an inch. And I just remember the nun pulling up her sleeves like this and jumping and hitting us on the back about 10 times with that strap. And then we had to get our hair cut real, really short and real, real short up here. It was shortly after that brutal beating, Rose and her siblings were picked up by their father to never return after enduring three years of abuse. APTN got exclusive access inside the former Kamloops Indian Residential School and Rose joined us on a tour of her formal residential school. We had to clean everything. Yeah, some people were punished and they would have to scrub these stairs with a toothbrush. And as she continued to walk the hallways, memories just came flooding back like it happened yesterday as she entered the chapel. This is the heebie-jeebie place, the evil place. This is where the, some of the boys went upstairs to make room for them here. There used to be pews all along here. Girls side, this boy side, they'd have a file all along here and up there was a, where the priest said the mass and, uh, we were told if we didn't pray we we're going to go burn in hell or the Romans are going to come and rape us and cut our uh, burn our eyes out and burn our hands and our feet and burn off our fingernails so we pray all the harder in essence Think, this really was hell yeah here in, in this place yeah. this was hell yeah so it was pretty, pretty horrid when you think about how the religion controlled us. Miller isn't surprised by the discovery of the 215 children found buried on the property. 
She believes there is likely more. Out of respect to the community and the young victims, APTN will not be showing the site where they were found until more ceremonial work is completed. Grief, sadness and sorrow now grip this entire community as they come to terms with the fact that 215 children were buried here on this former Indian residential school property. Leaders from across the country are demanding a full criminal investigation as well as more resources to search every residential school across Canada. Tina House, APTN National News, to Kamloops. We have stopped using terms like mass graves. These graves are only suspected sites. Well, after Kamloops came uh, graves identified at Cowess's First Nation in Saskatchewan, officials put the number at 500 or 751. Here's Tina House again with that story. <laughs> With the shocking discovery of the 751 unmarked graves that were discovered on the Cowess's First Nation, tonight is a chance for surrounding communities to pay their respects. Being out here earlier today, it was uh, very emotional for me, um, thinking about all the, the people that are here, not only the, the little kids, but also the... Um, adults and family members of who else who were all here I guess um, with this I just wanted to bring something to uh, in memory I guess and as day turns tonight the solar lights start to light up the graves of those that have been lost in time and nearly forgotten about until now Many of the graves are believed to be children who attended the former Maryville Indian Residential School, which was established in 1898 to 1997. For former student Miranda Desjardins, now 65 years old, it's an emotional experience to see so many lights that illuminate the unmarked graves. It actually makes my heart like it just, it's, it really hurts emotionally. And even driving down here today, like my boss was good, in, was good enough to give me time off because I was supposed to be working tonight. And then when she found out what was, was happening here, she's Miranda, she said, you better go home, she says, go, go, go spend time with your community. Kawas's First Nation member Kevin Friesen heard about the community looking for solar lights and he approached his boss Mark Ridley from the car dealership where he works. So immediately I went up to my owner and he phoned the local Canadian tire owner and said I need 800 lights today. And for the survivors to witness the solar light vigil it means everything. Terrible years. Yeah. That's what I said, I couldn't, can't imagine that those that, you know, like our friends that were there, that have gone and never were, aren't able to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But you're, you're, the, you're their voice now, so yeah. you know, both of you, people are going to know you guys' stories now. With the tragic discovery of the 751 unmarked graves behind me, the Kawas' First Nation is now following traditional Cree protocol and having pipe ceremonies every morning, asking for the Great Spirit to guide them as they deal with one of the biggest tragedies in Canadian history. Tina House, APTN National News, Kawas' First Nation. Growing collective understanding of the legacy of residential schools made for a somber first ever Truth and Reconciliation Day last fall. Our Tina House went back to Kamloops to mark that occasion. It's the dawn of a new day as Canadians honor the first Truth and Reconciliation Day, a federal holiday to remember all those that attended residential schools. Here in Kamloops to Sequipam, this honor song and ceremony is performed near the location where the 215 unmarked graves were discovered just four months ago. I'm thinking and praying for the young ones that were going to this school and also asking for them, their ancestors, to give us guidance and give us strength to continue the struggle that we're on today. No longer silenced, it's a day to reflect the strong resiliency of Indigenous people that survived genocide. 
The horrific discovery of the 215 children have now led to more unmarked graves being discovered across Canada. Meanwhile, the search continues to finally unearth the painful truth of what really happened. For survivors like Rose Miller, who attended here in 1949, it's taken her years to finally find the courage to share her horrific memories. Our peoples were so um, traumatized by this residential school and, and a lot of our stories weren't heard before. We were, t uh, they were told, but they were, we were never believed. Cookby Chief Roseanne Casimir says there are only 15 documented deaths of children at the former residential school, but so far they have uncovered more than 215 unmarked graves here alone. We believe this is one such situation of mass human rights violations, and we are concerned it might reflect criminal behavior, including suggesting violations of humanitarian law and genocide. Lawyer Don Worm says that the handling of complete records is troubling. It has the applications for all of those students that had applied for the common experience payments. What is most troubling about this is that there is now judicial approval for the destruction of those records. Where in a civilized country, where in the civilized world do documents get destroyed with judicial authority. Where? These drums represent the heartbeat of a nation as we remember those that never made it home. Young, innocent lives that were cheated of their full potential. They were sons, daughters, nieces, nephews, and friends, and they were loved. Along with the survivors, today is their day to remember those that we lost and those that still survive. Tina House, APTN National News, to Kamloops to Sequepham. The National Indian Residential School Crisis Line is available for survivors and others who might need support. That number is 1-866-925-4419. Well, once again, in our early reporting on this issue, we t used terms like mass graves or unmarked graves, and that's not entirely accurate. These sites are suspected unmarked graves only. Not only, but that's what they are. Uh, none of these are actually proven to be graves at this point. That, of course, would be to come. Well, we need to take a break. When we come back, the list of communities who believe they have found unmarked graves spreads across the country. Welcome back to Nova Scotia now, where the search began for graves at a former residential school in Mi'kma'ki. Angel Moore was there. About 30 people came to the powwow grounds at Sebaganagati First Nation to honour the children of Kamloops Residential School. Elder Earl Sack is a firekeeper and a sun dancer. As an elder, I like to say that we're praying for them. We smoke our pipes for them. We do our ceremonies for them. No matter how far away they are, they're standing next to us. And that's, that's what we think and that's what we do. Yeah. The only residential school in Mi'kma'ki opened from 1930 to 1967. The National Center for Truth and Reconciliation has identified 16 children who died at the school, but people fear there are more. Sack says finding the truth will start the healing. Finally, it finally come out in the open and it's really good. It's really good. It has to be uh, known out there around the world at what happened. You know. A sacred fire, a pipe ceremony, prayers and a feast. It's all ceremony that Elder Shirley Ann Nevin Taylor says was not allowed by the church. Because as a child, we were not allowed <clears throat> to purchase or we didn't have anything like this when I was a child. And uh, uh, it was because of the church and what their beliefs were. Our, our spirituality didn't count at all. As ceremony continued, an investigative team started the search for graves at the site of the former Shubenacadie Residential School. It was requested by Sebaganagadie First Nation and led by Jonathan Fowler, anthropologist and associate professor at St. Mary's University. So we're going to map all of it and we're going to use multiple instruments and we're going to bring that data to the community so that community members can then tell us where to look uh, with the radar and other tools. 
Fowler said the search will take a few weeks. The results will be presented to community members, who will decide how to proceed forward. Angel Moore, ABTN, Sebag and Nagety, First Nation. The Saddle Lake Cree Nation said over 200 children died at the Blue Quills Indian Residential School, and they want to find the remains of those missing children. Chris Stewart takes us there. It was one of the most horrific residential schools in Canada. The Blue Quills Indian Residential School operated from 1931 to 1970 by the Roman Catholic Church. Today, it is home to the Blue Quills University, owned and operated by nearby First Nations. The Saddle Lake Cree Nation says that 215 children ages 6 to 11 never returned home from the residential school. Eric Laird is the lead researcher and says they have the documents to prove it. The amount of missing children is extensive. It can be safely stated that in our community of 12,000 people, each family has had four to five children who went missing from this institution. Jason Whiskey Jack is a counselor at Saddle Lake. We need to find, to find out if there's any more in that area. The two men say that they have come across remains while burying current members who have passed away. We came across a, a rib, small rib cage and uh, attached to a spine, and then more infilling. We came across a small skull. When I hit a lot of these graves, uh, you know, there, there's no there's no supports for us. There's the records. Out the band there. is asking the we federal government for help it. in using ground penetrating radar to help find the remains of their children and to help with a wellness center to assist in any members suffering from trauma. Chris Stewart, APTN National News, Edmonton. Well, it's time for one more short break for this July 1st episode of APTN National News. Stay with us. Welcome back. On the one-year anniversary of the discovery of 215 suspected graves believed to be children who attended residential school into Kamloops to Shawetma, Tina House returned to that community as a gathering was held to honor them. Here's that story. At a sunrise ceremony at the former Kamloops Indian Residential School, the day began with a 5 a.m. sunrise ceremony to honor the 215 children that were found in hidden graves. It's a day for those to gather and support each other, meanwhile calling for justice for those young ones that just never made it home. And for those that did make it home, their scars are not far from the surface. Yeah, there was, uh, there was a lot of sexual abuse. I don't want to talk about it. It's a sad part of our life. And here inside the Pao Arbor, drummers and singers honor the residential school survivors and community leaders who have dedicated so much in the past year to educating the world about what happened here and at other residential schools across Canada. Cook B. Roseanne Casimir says there are important next steps that are underway that includes collecting DNA from all the families so that they can compare that to the children found in the graves. It's their goal, she says, to reunite them with their loved ones. We also have a legal team and a task force. They're also developing an action plan. And this action plan outlines all those meaningful steps that we need to heal as, we, as well as get justice for whatever and may be seen as a crime. No child deserves to be treated or disrespected, to be dismissed, abused, made to feel less than human. And no child deserves to have their friends disappear, never to be seen again, always wondering, am I next? Since the horrific discovery one year ago that sent shockwaves around the world, thousands have come forward to pay their respects to the many victims of residential schools. Hundreds of survivors have bravely stepped forward to tell their truth about what happened. Nowhere else in the country is there 
schools with a burial ground. Why are they here? They should be at home. And I really oh, feel that um, Canada and the church have, a, have an obligation to us to make it right. And in a move to reconcile the past, an Indigenous delegation recently traveled to Rome to meet with Pope Francis, which culminated in an apology and a promise for him to come to Canada. However, that tour will not include to Kamloops to Sabwepam. Grand Chief Stuart Phillips says it's a major misstep if he doesn't come here. It's disgraceful that uh, the Pope has refused to come and visit here at the epicenter of the discovery of the unmarked graves. And for 86-year-old Grand Chief Joe Manuel Sr., who attended the former Kamloops Indian Residential School, he's angry more hasn't been done. The law has got to be changed. Those people that were responsible for 215 young people here, they got to be taken to the Supreme Court of Canada to justify what has happened. The time for we didn't know is over. Since the discovery here at Kamloops to Sequepam, more unmarked graves are being discovered at former residential schools right across Canada, with more exploration work continuing. Tina House, APTN National News, to Kamloops to Sequepam. The federal government has appointed a special, special interlocutor to help out with the ongoing investigation into suspected unmarked graves at former residential schools. Fraser Needham had details on that development. Kimberly Murray of Ganasatage Mohawk Territory in Quebec is the new special interlocutor on suspected unmarked graves at several former residential schools in Canada. She says she fully realizes her job will be challenging. It was not an easy decision to take this role as special interlocutor. Murray's role has been described as helping Indigenous communities collect information from the suspected unmarked grave sites and helping resolve jurisdictional disputes if they arise. But as Justice Minister David Labeni points out, Murray will not have the power to prosecute. In my, in my role as Attorney General at the federal level, I, I can't appoint a special prosecutor. Nonetheless, Murray says she will be working with the communities to see if they want the sites investigated as crime scenes. Do we invite the police in? Uh, what police? RCMP, provincial police, municipal police, First Nations police. And there are pros and cons to all of those that I've heard talking to survivors in the last year. Chief Cab Mr. Delorm of Cowess's First Nation says the number one priority for his community is attaching names to grave sites. But he says Murray will help ensure any evidence is preserved. This position um, will make sure that causes, if there is any criminal activity, we are treating our site like a, like a criminal site. Like we are, we're making sure every one of our technical team gathers every evidence. Uh, we can't go to the local RCMP because well, what are we actually going to show them? And Kupi Roseanne Kashmir also says her community wants to make sure investigations are done properly. And it's also about preserving the evidence to ensure that, you know, rigor in our investigation to ensure that if we find that crimes were committed, the evidence is there to pursue those criminal uh, prosecutions. Marie officially begins her two-year contract June 14th. Fraser Needham, APTN National News, Ottawa. Just a reminder that the National Indian Residential School Crisis Line is available for survivors and others who might need help. That number is 1-866-925-4419. Well, that is a wrap on your APTN News for this July 1st. I'm Melissa Ridgen. With respect to you, however you're marking this day or not, we will see you back here tomorrow.